All right, what's up, guys? Welcome back. We are on week four now, and this is the final voiceover for season three. And I know it's been a few days since I posted, but I want to change it up a little bit. Um, we got Northwestern State, and I'm I'm not gonna. They're zero and three. They're still a good team. Uh, but guys, I wanted to start this off real quick, a little differently. Uh, for those of you watching, following the series, I've actually recorded all of season three, and I'm gonna get that out pretty quickly. You see, we got a, another suspension here, a right tackle. Uh, he's our best O lineman. So we're just going to – I can't remember what – I think I just did one full game. I want to keep that interest bar down. I'm not really sure what I did. I may have done – you can see how that interest bar drops. But anyway, we're going to get through this. Um, so I might end up streaming Season 4. And I'll post uh, – if you look me up on Twitch, I've actually streamed a couple times already just within the last week. Uh, today's Wednesday, April 7th as I'm recording this. Um, I've streamed a, I've streamed a couple times now and I'm thinking about changing it up and streaming season four and it won't be any different on YouTube. I'll still record all the gameplay, but, uh, if you look me up on Twitch, it's my same username, classic gaming eight, four, three. So that's why I wanted to wait. So I went ahead and finished season three. Um, and if you're, I know this, it's a lot of games to watch. I mean, obviously feel free to skip around. If, for those of you watching on YouTube and wanting to follow the series, but I will say the next games, game number five against Mississippi Valley, uh, Mississippi Valley State, you will want to watch that one. <laughs> so if you want to skip this one, if you're, if this next game's already out, like you will want to watch Mississippi Valley State. That was a very very great game, um, a close game. I'm not going to spoil it, but you'll want to watch that one. Um, Obviously, like I think even the sixth game, the very next game, I think it was Chattanooga. Uh, the game after that was also pretty good. I think I was losing at halftime, so you'll want to check that one out, not to spoil it. But game five and game six. And then also, of course, we still got to play Western Carolina. Uh, that's a good game down the road. And then our conference championship and our bowl game. Yeah, those are – if you want to skip around and just watch some games, I would I would choose game five, game six. Western Carolina, and then our conference and bowl championship. That's that's what I would choose. Now, the, the reason why I'm doing this because I know, like, a lot of people, you know, if you don't have time to watch all of it, obviously it's on YouTube. Feel free to skip around. Now, if you want to watch every video, go ahead, man. Like, I, I give you guys shout-outs. I don't know. Look at this, man. Look at the freaking – we almost gave off a kickoff return. I am still going to do a voiceover for this one. This is the team, the freaking Demons, man. They beat us last year. So, we had to schedule the home the home and home with them this year. Um but yeah, guys, I, I have done I have finished season three, and I haven't done anything on season four yet. So I'm gonna I want to get your guys' opinions on like schedule, who I should play in non-conference. Uh, I want to keep it kind of realistic. And look at this, starting off with a sack fumble, Thomas Robinson, big play. Except nobody can pick up the ball. Ah, finally, and of course we didn't get it, but that was a huge play. We're just starting out starting out great. We got momentum for that. So anyway. I, I'm, that's kind of it's kind of a different start to this video, but I am going to plan on streaming. Um, I've actually streamed a little bit of a new kind of dynasty I'm doing just for fun. I don't know how long I'll continue it, but look at this, man. We're getting pressure with our with our rush here. I think that was Ishmael Anderson on that sack, third and 19. We're looking good. Look at that move, Ishmael Anderson just put him down. We're we're a good team, and the reason why. So here's my thought process. The reason why I want to stream season three, I mean, uh, excuse me, season four, we've got, we'll have two seniors next year. We literally have two seniors next year. So season four and season five, as long as nobody goes pro, which is possible. Oh, look at this. What a diving play there by Robinson. If nobody goes pro after season four, then our, we'll have pretty much the same roster. And there's a chance, like, I'm playing on live stream. I may not be, like... I might play a little worse, especially if we get some people in the chat. Like, I've, I've had a couple people in the chat for my first game, or first couple games I played. Um, I think it was actually over Easter weekend. But, uh, so I'm, I, you know what, I think, obviously, like, we want to go for the title. That's our goal. I mean, we've won the SEC now, back-to-back. -back. Uh, not back-to-back, -back, excuse me. We lost the first season. We won the SEC last year. We're going for it this year. Um, 
for him. He's and not to spoil it, but we did beat Georgia Southern last week, so we're in good shape. We hold a commanding, basically a, basically a one-game lead over Georgia Southern. I mean, we got the tiebreaker, or excuse me, a two-game lead. Well, we'll get McIntyre get loose. So we beat Georgia Southern last week. We hold, we hold basically a two-game lead. We would have to lose twice for Georgia Southern to pass us because they already have one loss. We have zero losses. So basically it comes down to the Western Carolina game, which you guys will probably want to check out. But, yeah, so that's pretty much my thought process. We'll get into, you know, this is a voiceover, obviously. We'll get into that. But uh, I love when they come out in man defense in this formation. You can see the two corners over there on the left side. So we're going to run it right and just have to avoid their, their good outside linebackers. And we do a pretty good job of that. We pitch it late. McIntyre's got daylight. And I step out of bounds. That was kind of dumb. But <laughs> I was trying not to get hit. We maybe could have squeezed that into the end zone. But, uh yeah, so I know we got like you know a couple of people. I know a couple of people are definitely still watching. We've had, uh, you know, I, I really didn't have any, exp any expectations with this. I just thought, you know, I want to play some. Look at this, getting blown up. I want to play some NCA 07. I got emulation fired up, and I played it a little bit. Like I started this in like 2019, where I actually got it working, or maybe 2020. It was probably last year, but. Uh, I decided, yeah, let's let's start, you know, let's record some gameplay. I followed a couple of guys on YouTube, uh, Expanding Man. Al, Al Playbook Gamer is another one, or Playbook Gamer. I don't remember what his YouTube actual – I think it's just Playbook Gamer. If y'all – check him out if y'all want to see more content. But uh, it's been fun. So right now, third and 11, we're just trying to play it smart. We got all the way down the field here, but I don't want to throw a pick. I don't want to turn it over. We, we, if we even if we only kick a field goal, we're still getting momentum for that. So, but guys, let me know. Like, I, I think I got a question about that earlier, maybe in the first season, or I mentioned it, and somebody said I should do it. And well, I started doing it just for fun on this other dynasty. I really, I don't like. It's on a different dynasty that I don't really. It's kind of more of oh look at this, we're getting blown up. So it's on a different dynasty that I don't really care about too much. I just I'm playing for fun, basically. Like this one, it's all for fun. But obviously this one is, you know, I'm three seasons into this now, and or four seasons after this one's out. But uh, we're gonna kick a field goal here. We got a five-star freshman kicker. He's very reliable. Get him some uh, kick power bonus for this. Winning our back. He gets it up. We gotta beat the demons, man. They, the freaking Northwestern State demons. They went, they beat us last year and ended our hopes. They ended our hopes for a title after we went undefeated in conference. So we, uh, and one one thing I realized after I went through this season is that this team is also in the same conference as Sam Houston State, which is the the very close game. If you're watching this and you haven't seen the Sam Houston State game, I would encourage you. And I'm not just trying to say like every, I, of course, so like. I give you guys a huge shout out, a huge shout out if you're watching every single game. But if you have seen, if you're watching this right now and have not seen Sam Houston State, I encourage you to go back and watch this and watch that one first at least, because um, nothing, nothing too. Ex I mean, well, we'll wait and see. But I'm just trying to be real, with you guys, because I know it's a, you two, It's a lot of games, and I'm probably gonna post these pretty quickly now that I've finished the season. Um, I think it's probably going to be like, uh, let's see, today's Wednesday, and I posted Georgia Southern on Sunday, so it'll probably be at least Friday before I get this game out, like, completely processed on YouTube, so, but other than that, I'm going to try to go, like, maybe every other day, or, like, three games a week, so, but yeah, Sam Houston State, if you haven't seen that one, check that one out, um, and then game five against Mississippi Valley State, that's one to watch. Game six was pretty good, I'm not going to lie. Um, and then Western Carolina and the final two games. I mean, that's pretty much it. And, you know, of course, don't – yeah, I mean, feel free to – if you're wanting to follow the season and watch every game, I'm going to uh, – basically what happens is I, I think I kind of turn up my <laughs> – I turn up my, my audio, I think it's a little better. Like, my, my audio, my, like, commentary. I think I get more into it because I'm thinking, you know, if I'm going to stream – I don't want to be just like boring just sitting here talking like I think I get a little more into it later on in the season so I appreciate you guys for watching and all the people who've subscribed for me like it, it shows some people that had I think just people that had channels of their own but uh yeah man it's it's been fun so season three we got focus on this game they're starting to move the ball though it's third and eight you can see I'm running pretty base defense, nothing crazy. I bite on the run there, so we leave this guy open, and he gets it. I do. I jump for some reason. I don't know why. 
Probably should have just ran for the tackle. But, uh, I mean, th this team beat us last year, so I went into this game pretty skeptical. You know, I was... I wanted to get, I wanted to demolish this team honestly, but at the same time they're a good team. They're they're still rated pretty well. And they have talent. I think I did the scout last game. I don't even remember if I looked at their roster. Got lucky there with the incomplete pass. That was just mistimed throw. So we're switching up our formation. We're going with this 3-3-5 stack. I'm trying to play man coverage. And you see I got Edwards at the uh, free safety to play deep. And look at that. We're at a nice. I think that was Corey Cole, 47. Yeah, 47. Our linebackers, I'm excited about our linebackers. I mean, obviously, so Thomas Robinson is our senior. He's our Juco senior. The impact with the guy with the white dot there. He's going to graduate, but we've got... We've got uh, a freshman that I'm very excited about, number one. You guys will see him a little bit through this season because uh, he's just too good not to put on the field. And we're there for the post, and I bat it down. I don't get the pick. We were there for that one. That was perfectly played. Fourth and ten on the 30. They're actually going for it. Look at this. So they're playing aggressive. I guess their kicker can't make the, what is this, 48, 47-yard field goal. So they're going to go for it. We have no reason. We're just going to rush three, try to – Try to uh, get on their uh, the right side of their line. We're just playing eight back in coverage. We're gonna try to make this quarterback beat us. And he throws it short. Robinson's there. He actually strips it, so we get credit with a turnover. And then I fumble it. Look at this, man. What kind of wild play was that? So how bad would that have been? How bad would that have been if I fumbled that and came and uh, Payne, Travis Payne, didn't pick it up? That would have been terrible, um, <laughs> because then they, if they picked it up, they would have gotten it first and ten again. So if we got kind of lucky there. I would have. I mean, obviously Robinson making the play, we picked it up with Edwards. But then when he dropped it on the ground, I kind of man, that that's a game changing play because if they they could have scored a touchdown, and they would have gotten credit with a turnover as well. So here we go. We're running triple option. We got uh, McIntyre out alone. Can't break a tackle, but that's a good first down run. I'm also I'm also thinking about reworking a little of the formations for next season. So I think I got my playbook pretty set, but I want to get your guys' input on the schedule. Who do you think I should play? Um, obviously, I'm not gonna play like a ridiculous hard schedule. I mean, because we gotta go we gotta go up against Western Carolina and Georgia Southern, and there's uh, there's some other teams that aren't that bad. Um, Appalachian State and Chattanooga are both getting better. Um, Wofford, if they just get a better quarterback, I think they would be tough to stop. Um, I mean, the whole SEC East in general is is pretty solid. So we don't want to, like, I don't want to be scheduling, like, all these crazy teams. Um, look at this. Our center got blown up. Because that's what happens, man. Like, it's this game's, this game's so unpredictable. NCAA 7, with the momentum meter, with jump the snap, it is so unpredictable. So, uh, and you know what? I'd be fine if I go 9-3 and three next year. I mean, obviously, we hopefully we don't, but... I mean, we have a chance to win the title, and I could easily see us go at nine and three, especially if I stream because I may not be like I'll have to. I may I may be focused on chat at sometimes at some points. Look at McIntyre putting in work. We can't get the first down. They stop us short. So kind of a slow start to this game. We got down the field on the first drive, but they're playing good. They're playing pretty well. One thing I didn't figure out all season was our punt coverage. I've got McIntyre. I know it's because he's lined up at fullback, so I'm not too worried. I mean, not McIntyre. Washington. But we also have, look at Hayes. I really don't want our, our number two running back or third running back out there. And then we also have Edwards. we got, like, all of our top players out there on punt coverage. But. So, yeah, guys, if you if you want to catch me on stream, um, now I'm not going to play. I'm not going to be playing the Citadel yet. Look at Robinson, almost another strip. He's going for all the strips in this game. Six tackles for the game and one sack. That's in the first quarter. He's on pace for 24 tackles, guys. <laughs> That's insane. He's having a great senior season so far. Uh, we're going to flip him and see, you know, I'm going to put him in coverage this time because I feel like they may pass here. And they do. And I don't know how that guy caught that. I, did we deflect that? Look at this. Oh, I just, I, I didn't think there was any chance he was going to catch that. Looked like Michael Whitehead was there for the pick, and it just, 
sailed right into that guy's hands. So, I mean, even with we have plus two momentum, we're only up three nothing. They're getting some good breaks here. We're going with a pretty heavy blitz here. We're going Thunder Green. They do play action, but they kind of. I don't even know what happened there. That guy was wide open. That might have been my guy. I'm not really sure. But fortunately, went out of bounds. So yeah, guys, this is the last. This is the last of the voiceovers from here on out. All my audio is recorded live at the time. Jamal Anderson with the play there. But I wanted to I wanted to mix it up a little bit, and this is partly I've recorded this game so long ago, honestly. Um, I, I got I was so excited to play season three. I wanted to start recording, and I didn't actually get my audio set up. Uh, you know, which I kind of planned on anyway, because I did the I can't I did a game last. I can't remember which game I did a little voiceover on season two, but uh, look at our run defense. Ishmael Anderson again making a play, two back-to-back -back tackles, big number 99. But yeah, I mean, like I think that's what I'm wanting to do with this dynasty. Is I'm not want, I'm wanting to change it up a little bit throughout the seasons. I don't want like I don't want every season to be exactly the same. Just me playing and the voiceover. I mean, not a voiceover, but me playing, recording my voice live. So, well, you know what I mean. Like, just YouTube, I want to stream. I want to try playing live. And if you guys have a Twitch account, you can come on and chat. Uh, of course, you know, obviously, if you can make it. I mean, it's Twitch. It's live streaming. I don't even know. It would most likely be early evenings. Um, at least based on what my schedule is right now. Look at Marcelo. Look at that move. They make a tackle, though. That was a good move. At least this week, I've been streaming around... Around, around f five five to six o'clock Eastern, and the reason I do that, we're gonna try to jump him off sides. Now we end up, I end up snapping that. I don't know why, but it worked out. Look at this, Marcelo gets a pick from the ref. We take it out of bounds. So into the first quarter, three nothing. Not a whole lot going on yet. We need to get in the end zone. But yeah, so I've been streaming. I think I've streamed four days, maybe maybe three. Actually, just three actually. Um, and my schedule is I'm a, I actually work seven to four, so I'm off pretty early in the afternoon. And then I've been I've been going to the gym at like eight thirty at night when it's not crowded. So that's why my best time to stream is going to be like six o'clock and from like six to eight in the afternoon. That's probably my best streaming time. So or evening I guess six to eight at night. But uh, yeah, it's my same username, Classic Gaming eight four three. And I think this video will be out Friday, so I'm not really sure what I'll be doing this weekend. But if anybody wants to check it out, you can follow me. Um, if you, I mean, if anybody on here streams too, man, like I know it's not the easiest thing to set up, but I would, I would love to watch. I mean, especially these older versions. Like I love NCAA 14, but we're getting Paul Hayes involved in the Wildcat. He's got 91 speed or 90 speed, something like that. Not a whole lot there, but it just we're trying to mix it up a little bit. But anyway, what I was saying, yeah, I mean, I, I, I got one of my subscribers, Little Mike, he's doing a dynasty and posted about it on my, I think my last video, so, yeah, I mean, I just want, I want to follow stuff like that, it's cool, man, it's cool to see, especially NCAA 07 or any old version, it's fun to see, McIntyre, oh, I don't know why I juke there, <laughs> I don't know, why. I think that was the later action, because that broken tackle lasted so long, he just shoved him on the ground, but yeah, I know I'm talking a lot in this video because it's the last voiceover and I just want to explain to you guys what my future, what my plans are for the future. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to like do anything, you know, groundbreaking or, you know, nothing unique, but I will be streaming. I think that's my plan. At least, at least for season four, that's my plan. So we'll see how it goes. But we got to get through season three first for you guys. I mean, there, like I said, there's some fun games. It's a fun season. We're going no huddle here. Look at the block. Marcelo getting downfield, but nobody picks up their uh, linebacker there, 54. I can't remember if I scouted this team last season. So, I mean, uh, not last season, last video, because I don't think I did at the start of this video unless I was just talking over myself, not paying attention. But. Look at this. They're going with two down linemen. I have no idea what they're doing here when they call this formation. Seems like everybody's rushing, so that didn't really work. But uh, number three. Number three, guys. Y'all are going to love him. 
Um, he, we've, we've got so much potential with number three. Paul Hayes. I think I said that maybe the last game or the one before. But he, he's a... He's an 80 overall running back. I think he was a four-star recruit. He's a four-star athlete, but he's an 80 overall running back, which is basically five-star level. But he also has 72 throw power and accuracy or something like that. So, And then Roberts is just pure speed at quarterback, 85 speed. But he can also chuck the ball deep, as we've seen a couple times already. But y'all are going to love number three. When, he, when we won that Wildcat, I mean, it doesn't work every time, but especially later in the season, I get more comfortable with it, so... Y'all are going to love it. And here, this is our audible. We can just audible under center here with Roberts and just run our, our flex bone. And it didn't work that time. I, I should have bounced it more to the outside. But remember my I, – I kind of remember now my right tackle. He was uh, suspended for the game. So we're, we're going with our, our worst offensive lineman is out for the game. I mean, not our worst. <laughs> our best offensive lineman is out for the game. So we got to replace our right tackle in this one. So now we go with Townsend trying to get McIntyre on the edge. We break a tackle, but then they stuff us again. So now it's third and goal. We're just trying to get in the end zone, man. It's We haven't been able to all game so far. They're coming out. Coming out goal line with uh, corners on the edges. Now they they actually audible to man. Look at them. They audible to man. So we are going to take advantage of it. Roberts is going to get a nice block, and we get in with McIntyre finally. We got a touchdown on the Northwestern State Demons. Goodness. This team's good. I mean, we, our defense has played well so far, but this team is good. I mean, we can't let that uh, we can't let that uh, get to this year. I mean, we're only up 10-0. So this this morning, or not this morning, this afternoon, right before this video, right before I started recording, I actually posted a highlight on Reddit of the next game. So if you found this series from Reddit, um, it'll be, I guess, Wednesday. You might even have already seen that post. It was uh, Marcelo. You'll see it in the game if you watch the next game, which if you're watching this one, you should definitely watch the next game. Uh, Marcelo, I go up the middle with Marcelo, and he just busts out and destroys, like, four people. He breaks a tackle and just bowling balls through several people, and it's it's great. Um, it's one of the best runs of the dynasty. So I posted that on Reddit just just a while ago, Wednesday afternoon. What is going on? People running around outside. I hear them through the windows. All right, let's get in it, man. Our defense has played well. We we gave some yards on the last drive, but we got the stop. Ooh, toss. This is a pass, but it's not going to work, man. You can't do that against Nicholas, against our strong safety over there. Because I know that pass is going back to the quarterback. So it's smart play by Nicholas to just abandon his zone and take the running back. So third and 13. We're back in the 3-3-5 stack with Edwards. This is our dropping eight in coverage, rushing three. We're letting him try to beat our zone. And we almost get a pick. I just hit it a little late, I think. I mean, he had his hands on it. I think I hit it just a little late. But we're there, man. We, we are there. That made me nervous a little bit because he kind of got behind us. But fortunately, the quarterback threw a bullet and didn't lob it. So, again, defense is playing well. Now, that is not going to be the case the whole season. I'll just tell you that. I'll just tell you guys. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> Our defense is playing well. They played well the last game against Georgia Southern. I think we only gave up, what, a late touchdown or something. Defense is playing well so far. We'll see if we can hold it. We'll see if it lasts the whole game, though. Still a lot of time left. So we're getting Hayes involved here. No, we can't pitch that, though. They kind of stack us on the right side. But, uh, I mean, I, Townsend is senior. I trust him at Flexbone. Roberts is higher rated, but I want to keep him fresh. He's a freshman. I, as much as Townsend fumbles, I think Roberts would fumble just as much. And half of those fumbles are caused by, you know, just user error and bad, bad pitches. So here they are again with these two down linemen. I have no idea what the guys are doing over there on the right side. I think they're, well, you see two of them rush, one of them drops back in zone. Marcelo takes over, breaks the tackle. So you see Marcelo's 10th in the conference in rushing, and he's our second-string running back. 
And we basically have five guys that run the football, so that's pretty good. And then we got, obviously, McIntyre leads the conference, but then we got, you know, we have Townsend. He gets some yards. Um, Roberts gets some good yards occasionally. And then uh, Hayes. So here's here's McIntyre. It's his turn. We're going to get an easy first down. And this back just hit the century mark. And look at that. Already 112 yards for McIntyre. It's only the first half, and his rushing yards is already in three digits. He's been unstoppable so far, Coach. So we're controlling, we're controlling the ball pretty well again. I mean, it's 10 to nothing. We'd like to get another touchdown here. We can really open this game up. I'm doing the double halfback option with... And look at the blocking. Look at the beautiful block there. Who is that? That's why our wide receiver. I think that was Parrish. Number 12? No, Kirkpatrick. That was Kirkpatrick, number 12. What a beautiful block on that one. I think I, I I forgot Robert Fox, I think, is still... I can't remember if he was suspended or injured, but he's still out. So our senior wide receiver is still out for the game, for this game. So we one of our seniors is out. It's just Townsend and McIntyre, and I think maybe our center is a senior. Other than that, it's all sophomores and freshmen. So about three minutes to go here till half. So, I mean, it's it's there's too much time left for us to completely run out the clock here. Uh, with it being second and nine, we want to try to focus on getting this first down. Uh, this is like this looks beautiful for up the middle, but we'll obviously we got to read it and just see what happens here. So we're gonna try it. Didn't get didn't get a whole lot I wanted. They kind of crashed down pretty well. That was a tough read because it looked like it was gonna be wide open, but. You know, two yards is better than nothing, so. Third and seven. From the 12 yard line. Man coverage. They got overlapping guys over there, but it's a corner on Kirk Patrick, and then the safety is over there as well. And look at that blitz, man. I don't know what happened to our line there. That's our guard that I don't know why the guard – does the tackle – I don't know. I wasn't paying attention if the tackle pulls on that play, but – uh that one got kind of blown up, but that is our backup right tackle over there. So now this is going to go. We're going to try to just let him run under two minutes here. Sometimes I like to call timeout when it hits two minutes. But they, they, they don't, so we'll just kick it right away here. And good kick. We're looking good. 13 nothing. We got... So we got a chance to make one more stop here on defense, and we can get out in the first half with the shutout. So again, guys, yeah, just let me let me know what you think, especially if you're watching this one. Um, you know, I'm thinking about streaming season four, and when I say that, I'm still going to record the games. So, you know, obviously, you know, I'm streaming. Oh, look at that big hit. We're streaming, but I'm going to record the games, so they'll still be on YouTube. So the, for you guys watching the series, you're not going to miss anything, even if you don't, you know, obviously, if you miss, if you don't get it, if you don't make a stream, or you know, even if you only, if, even if you can't even make it at all, you're still going to rush see the games on YouTube. So throwing it deep. Look at that. Well, not deep, but again, another one that was just kind of floated out there, and we were there, just their receiver beat us to the ball. And they end up with another first so now they actually have, they took off our plus five momentum. So I gotta, I gotta be prepared here. I don't want to give up any. I don't want to give up a touchdown. I'm fine. I would find. I'd be fine giving up a field goal, but let's keep it a two-score game. Going to the tight end over there. There's still plenty of time. They got all the timeouts, so tackling him out of bounds really doesn't matter on that. I mean, it, they have plenty of time to get down the field. Oh, that out route got me, and we have a horrible. Look at this guy running backwards though, and he put a fumble. Who was that? I think that was our defensive end. That wasn't. That was number 52. So that was a weird play. <laughs> he got me with the out route, and then he caught it and just started running backwards. I don't know what he was doing. He was trying to do like a loop around, but it was taking forever. So we got the fumble, and here, guys, this is it. This is option pass with Hayes. The only problem is they're in man coverage, so we got to be careful here. So look at this. They We actually get him open. Look at that. That's beautiful. We throw it last minute. 
Perry, it's a quick play, but look, he's wide open and he sits right in that spot. It's perfect. It is great against zone if that's open because he just he'll sit right in the zone. But also in mana, if they commit to the run, we can just throw it over the top. So you guys are gonna see me run that play quite a bit. Not a lot, but it's fun. It's a fun one. It feels good when you connect on that because obviously, I mean, if they if they don't cover the option, Hayes has enough speed, and this is. This is a problem. Uh, we got to throw that away. And we got hit, too. I think that should have been rough in the passer. That was a late hit. Or they didn't call it. In 2020, 2021, that would be rough in the passer. But uh, not in NCAA 07. So, 54 seconds. Ball in the 35. We had plenty of time here. We got all of our timeouts. And you see the, their, their alignment. We're trying to get... They got the linebackers on the right side, but... Fortunately, they jumped there because I, I was trying to run away from the linebackers, but they kept, sh they kept shifting with my audibles. So, you have three five yards there. Clock is still stopped. Now, this is uh, – they go 3-4 they go here, which is, which is interesting. Um, and, again, I don't remember how good their safeties are. Yeah, we take it with Townsend. It's going to be third and one. We're going to go no huddle here and see if we can get – look at our running backs both in the zone, dual running backs in the zone. This is what you love to see on third and one. And Marcelo picks it up. First and ten now. We are in the red zone. That's career numbers for Marcelo. He's he's going to have a season next year, though. McIntyre graduates. Marcelo is going to be potentially the lead back. We'll have to see what happens. Lines up with a split backfield. But McIntyre, we're still loving him, man. And we got to call timeout. We got tackled in bounds here. So again, I don't want to force a turnover. I don't want, or I don't want to panic and throw a pick. And um, we just need to play safe here because a field goal again is going to be a field goal would be fine. It would be a 16-point lead. You see, they're blitzing the safeties, or at least they're showing blitz. And here they come. We get rid of it somehow, but that, that kind of a good read there. I think they had a zone blitz. Their linebackers dropped back into coverage. But fortunately, no turnover. We got rid of the ball. Third and four. Now they got their linebackers playing defensive end. But they jump. We're going to get McIntyre, and we get the flag. We were short, so it was, it was going to be fourth and one. But we do get the flag. The only problem is I think the clock is going to run. So I'm going to try to call a play real quick. I just did the same play. Clock is now running. We got one timeout left, so we basically got this play. This play will be the last play. And it goes out of bounds, so maybe not. We got six seconds, so... Six seconds. There's time for one more here, but we ha it has to be quick. Second and nine. I mean, we may as well take a shot at the end zone, but it's got to be quick. So we're looking. We try to. That that was just a bad read. We tried to squeeze it in, but I should have lobbed it. I should not have bolted that pass. So look at that. Only took two seconds off the clock. <laughs> But I, I'm going to go ahead and kick the field goal here. After I did that, I realized I could easily throw a pick. So we're going to kick the field goal. And we'll take this into halftime with a 16-point lead, as long as we don't miss this thing. Kick it high, nice and high. It goes in one second on the clock, but we should be able to defend the kickoff. So, guys, we're going to take this to halftime. And again, I am excited for. I'm excited for you guys to check out the next few games. See again, game five, game six. I would say game ten. I think game ten is Western Carolina, whichever one Western Carolina is. And then uh, it might be game eleven. I can't remember. And then uh, the conference championship. Spoiler alert: we win the conference. And then, uh, but again, I mean, here's the deal. We win the conference, but do we win every game? That's the question. That's the question. Do we go, are we going to go for the natty? Season three is exciting. You'll have to check it out. Um, if, I mean, obviously this game, we're pretty much, I mean, we forced fumbles and pretty much dominating, although they have moved the ball a little bit. 
Uh, passing uh, Hayes, look at that, one for one, 22 yards. That's our Wildcat quarterback. Or, I mean, basically our Wildcat. He's a running back. McIntyre is just on beast mode. And we're going to miss him. Like, he's been such a staple piece of the offense. We're going to miss him. But uh, we got talent, though. We do have talent upcoming. We have, we're recruiting a five-star running back in the since he's recruiting. So we we have talent. We we also re are redshirting a guy. There's a four star recruit from this season that we're redshirting. So Corey Cole. Uh, I mean, excuse me. Thomas Robinson, Ishmael Anderson, both with a sack. Robinson didn't have much of a second quarter though. <laughs> he had six tackles and a sack in the first quarter, and nothing in the second. Well, he did have a. He has two forced fumbles. Never mind. He did get a forced fumble and a recovery, I think, in the second quarter. So that's yeah. He's. He might be a player of the game, as good as McIntyre's playing. Thomas Robinson, six, what is that stat line? It was six tackles, one sack, two forced fumbles, and one recovered in the first half. So pretty pretty solid stuff, though. So basically right now, what we want to do, and this is what I've, you're going to see me do this a lot, and you already have. We're out gaining them by quite a lot. I basically want to run clock now because... I want to shorten this game. We're up by two scores. Even if we just kick a field goal, we'd be up by three. So I want to shorten this game. I want to shorten. Uh, we want to just stick to running. McIntyre in the zone here, so we're gonna to try to get it out to him. We do. He's got space. He's got one guy to beat, and he doesn't break a tackle. That's okay. I'm okay with that because again, we can run clock. Except I know huddle. <laughs> For some reason, I know huddle. Maybe I'm not doing that. This is what happens when you do a voiceover from a game that I played quite a while ago. So normally you'll see me run clock. Obviously that was a bad decision. So maybe we can just analyze our own gameplay here. Uh, I mean, it's still early. It's early third quarter. Sometimes the no huddle has worked. Uh, but now that it's third and five, and we're actually going with the Wildcat. Um, obviously this isn't Wildcat. Shotgun, split F trips. Now we're not going with Wildcat. Third and five. I, I should have watched a little bit of the game. I watched some of the game. But I didn't watch the second half, honestly, on replay. Um, we may actually have to burn a timeout, I think. Yeah. So I think so. What I was thinking there is I wanted to run Hayes. I wanted to run Hayes at taking the snap under center or at that QB at Wildcat. But I was thinking, you know, it's third and five. I don't. I want to. I don't want like a high risk play. I'm going to do something I know that can work, which is this, this potential play right here. But we're actually going to call the same audible that I wanted to do. Um, they're not the same one, but we're going under center. We're doing flex bone. Option right. And Roberts has got enough speed. He's going to pitch it. McIntyre's going to – I mean, Washington's going to pick it up. I'm getting their names mixed up for some reason. When they both have the dot like that, I, I forget which is which. Five and twenty-five. When I'm when I'm running triple option, I pitch it to a, rock, a dot with a I mean a running back with the dot. I, I call him by the wrong name. So Washington in the game now. They fan they leave the middle wide open if we can just block. And they kind of I mean they're, they're again their defense is not bad. So again like. It's it's the de the defense is not bad. It's just I'm well. I, the problem is like when we get some teams that start getting stacked, like you know season four, season five, season six, maybe even some of these teams are gonna start getting up in the A ratings, um, if not A pluses. So and a, each team every year is just gonna keep getting better. Like as we're getting better, Georgia Southern's getting better. As we're getting better, Western Carolina is also getting better. So. I think I look at my team and I think, okay, well we've got next this this upcoming season we're losing Thomas Robinson, we're losing McIntyre, we're losing Townsend. But here we go, third and seven. We're gonna try it this time. But I mean, each team is gonna they're gonna you know we're returning a lot of guys, but so is every other team. So is Georgia Southern. So is Appalachian State. So we tried here and we get it again. That was a quick one. I wanted to wait a little bit longer, but he hit it right when he broke on that curl. And a beautiful pass, man. It is this, he throws it better than Townsend does. No knock on Townsend, but he legit, Paul Hayes at running back, throws it better than Townsend as a true freshman. So, I'm, I mean, he's, the thing is, though, his, his throwing stats are not going to improve since I have him at running back, but they're good enough that I can run that play and I can run that formation. So, we're going here. McIntyre got the edge. 
Another 11, 12 yards for McIntyre. He's got to 157 now. He's going to hit 200 possibly. And the other thing is, like, I don't have to just run option pass. Like, this formation has QB choice. We have PA Reed. This formation is, is pretty nice. And here, this is QB choice, but I'm actually going to audible. We're going to well, actually don't audible. I flip it. And, of course, their defense rotates. But or at least we're going away from the flashing guy. Kind of. There he comes. Goodness. I was trying to go away from that guy, and he still made the play. So, triple option. We're going to try to go with Hayes here. And again, there's space. Couldn't get the pitch out, though. That, that happens sometimes. And if I stream, you'll... I mean, when I start streaming next season, season four, I, that's what I plan on doing. I mean, you'll see me. You'll, I'll, I'll explain more things that are happening, especially if, you know, if anybody's viewing and we have a chat. But sometimes, I mean, when you get hit head-on like that... Not head-on, but when you get hit like that on, your, on the side you're going to pitch to... Look at this. Look at this. Third and 11, I run it. We pick it up. That's a clutch play there. Marcelo breaking a tackle. But what I was saying is sometimes you get hit. Even if you don't get hit on the right side, sometimes they just won't pitch it. Um, which you know I'm fine with because I feel like any anytime you, get, you pitch it late or get hit while you pitch it, it could be a fumble. So that's why I run Townsend instead of Roberts for those triple options. So Marcelo getting some carries here. Look at that broken tackle, man. If I could have scored there, that would have been a highlight. That spin to break the tackle, that would have been such a highlight if he could have scored that somehow. But Marcelo is about to earn his, his nickname of Mello. And we're not calling him after LaMelo Ball or Carmelo Anthony. He's Marcelo. It's Mello Washington. So we're going to try to score with Hayes here. Hayes just looks bigger, man. He, he just looks bigger. And that's why, dude. True freshman, he just looks bigger. He looks stronger. He's 6'1 and like 200 pounds. So, I mean, he's not a small guy. He's got pure strength. I mean, that just look at that. That was a beautiful play. So, I mean, look, I mean that's the thing, man. We got depth at running back now. We've got three guys that can carry, and I trust with the ball. And we, we used them all on that drive. We used every one of them. We used Marcelo, Paul Hayes on the touchdown, and the option pass, and then obviously McIntyre picking up big runs. So we're, we're still we're looking good. We're up 23 to nothing. Our defense is playing great. I mean, that was, that was a great sequence there. And look at our kicker kicking it deep, so they got to take a knee. So basically what I'm thinking, you know, at this point in the game, I would be thinking, okay, if we can just, if we can get them off the field again and not give up a touchdown, then I think the game might be over because we're playing so well on defense. Our offense is controlling the ball. Only three yards per carry for their running back. So even our run defense, we're playing, I'm playing a lot of zone, but our linebackers are stopping the run. We're doing, we're doing good. Our defensive line is playing great. Again, our defensive line running that three three five, you don't we don't get a whole lot of uh, a whole lot of shout outs, but Oh now look at this. Now they're is that their fullback that breaks one? But you know, they're they're playing well. Twenty six rushing yards still. I mean it's, they've gotten a, what Ishmael Anderson's gotten a sack, Robinson's gotten a sack. So also another thing I'm thinking, I'm not gonna make a position change, but I'm thinking about putting Ishmael Anderson, I'm thinking about switching my defensive ends, uh, or at least the side of the field they're on. Now, this formation, it doesn't really matter. And look at this, goodness, Corey Cole. Corey Cole, man. But look, I mean, Ishmael Anderson took up a whole blocker, and that's what happens. What I'm thinking of is, I'll show you guys on the next play I run in the 3 through 5 split formation, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Basically, it's just moving one to – it's just switching their right or left side. Uh, but, again, in this play, it doesn't matter because they line up evenly. But I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about, and I'm thinking about making that change next season. Oh, right through the hole. Oh, look at this. So they're actually running the ball a little bit, but you know what? I'm okay if they run. 
because it takes time off the clock. Uh, so here we go, 3-3-5 split. Look at where – so Ishmael Anderson is our bigger defensive end. And look at where look at where he lines up. He's on the very edge. And I, I probably should have done this a long time ago because he needs to be lined up on the left side where 52 is. And it's probably not a huge difference. Look at him making the play right there. But he, he's, he's bigger. If we line him up more in the middle – I think it'll be more effective for him. I think he'll be better to stop the run. Now, he got the tackle on that play, but that's because they rounded the right side. But see, look how 52, 52 is right over the left guard, and Ishmael Anderson's all the way to the right side of the right tackle, and I pinch him left. But that's what I'm thinking, because he's built almost more like a defensive tackle on our team. Like, he's, you know, obviously, look at this catch, man. I outrun that completely. But that's what I'm thinking about doing. I don't remember if he's left end or right end. And hold on one second, guys. I gotta answer this phone call. Apparently, Give me one second. Hello. a.m. <laughs> I got my second COVID vaccine, so this is what this is. Sorry, guys. I just feel like you. God, what the hell is this? <laughs> well, how am I gonna do a virtual shot? No, no, no. That's, I don't need to do that. Sorry, I thought you guys would. I, as soon as I realized it was an automated message and. I'm getting my co my second COVID shot on the 14th, which may have already been happening. You know, if you if somebody out here watching this a month later, obviously it's already happened. But I got the first one two weeks ago from the 7th, which is today, and they're calling me to tell me that my second COVID vaccine could be virtually, which it won't because that's not possible. Um, but yeah, so that's what's going on. <laughs> I don't know why they're calling it. 6.30 on a Wednesday evening, but cool stuff. So anyway, what are we doing? Um, <laughs> I hate automated messages, man. Like, I mean, I guess it's better than actually having to talk to somebody at some point. I mean, it depends on who's calling you. But Anyway, they're actually moving the ball here, so I guess we can focus on the game again. The linebackers shift a bit inside. I'm, I'm probably not even going to mute. I was going to obviously, I was trying to mute my microphone. And it wouldn't let me do it on my laptop. I, I'm recording this on the laptop, the audio. And it wouldn't, I didn't want to adjust the volume. I didn't want to turn the volume down on the mic because then I'd have to get it back to the right spot. So I'll probably just, I'll probably just leave that in there. If it was somebody important calling, I would have paused or cut the audio. But uh, we'll just leave that in there so you guys can know I'm getting, getting the COVID vaccine. So fourth and two, here's the deal. They're look at that. Look at them kicking a field goal. Like what? That's kind of a silly decision, in my opinion. What do you think? What would you guys do here? It's the end of the third quarter. You're down 23 to nothing. Fourth and two on the 25. Now, fortunately, in this game, kicking is pretty much automatic. But would you really kick this field goal though? I mean, you're down. You're still down by three scores, so that doesn't really do anything. I mean, basically, you, have to, you still have to get three touchdowns, but you can win the game with three touchdowns. But you could also, you'd have to. I mean, I don't know. I don't know, man. I think I would have tried to go for it and get a touchdown if I were them. But you know, fourth quarter, then they have been able to stop us either. I mean, we only have 23 points, but we've been. I mean, we're already almost done with the third quarter, and we've been playing pretty well on offense. So, fortunately. Look at this. We're, we're going to get creative. This is another formation I'm excited about. So this play is a wide receiver option pass, and guess who we're giving it to? It's Mr. Paul Hayes. Now, the thing with – I think we got a great jump. This play actually doesn't work as well, especially if they do that. But we did get the great jump. Now, I can – I have to remember to myself, I can lateral because it's actually an option pass. So if they blitz like that and I get hit, I can throw the lateral to, to – uh, to uh, McIntyre, but uh, yeah, end of the third quarter, we're doing good, 3-0. Uh, this team's 0-3. They must have had a tough non-conference because 
I don't want to spoil it, but it really doesn't matter since, you know, it's Northwestern State and y'all don't really care about... Unless you all want to follow the ranking of Northwestern State. Uh, they end up going to the Big 12 Championship, so... <laughs> they're 0-3 right now and getting close to being 0-4, but they're not a bad team, guys. They end up going to the Big 12 Championship. And I'm not even kidding. I think in the Big 12 Championship, it's Northwestern State versus Sam Houston State. So the two teams, two of the teams we played go to the Big 12 Conference Championship game. So our schedule was not, our non-conference schedule was actually pretty legit this season. Um, we got our rivalry with Hostra at the end. Uh, Texas Southern wasn't great. They were an easy game. But these two, I mean, this team's still pretty good. They have talent. And unfortunately, they just destroyed somebody. They lost too much yardage that time. Loss of four. I think you can't blame the. Don't like loss of four, but the only good thing is the clock is still running. You're not going to be able to showcase your abilities without. And at this point, I mean, it's a three-score game. At this point, I'm just basically what I'm doing is I just I'm not throwing incompletions. I mean, so I don't even know it. We may not even throw the ball again. Uh, we're gonna keep it. We make the right we right read with Roberts and look at him, man. He's, he's, he's got good speed. It's just pure speed. He's 85 overall speed. He's a perfect option quarterback. Next year, we will be running. I mean, uh, Townsend's going to graduate, so there's a possibility we'll be... I mean, we'll see Roberts a lot next season. Because, um, obviously, Townsend, we keep him in on the pistol and flex bone formations, at least for the most part. Marcelo in the zone, so this is just a run up the middle. You can see us now. We're really draining the clock. And we I could have gotten to farther the edge, but look at Marcelo, man. He's just – he won't go down. Paul – I mean, Paul Hayes is like the biggest guy. I think I, Marcelo might be bigger than him, but – I mean, our running backs are all tough. And that's honestly what we need. I would rather have – I would rather have running backs with good carry and good break tackle than like 95 speed. I don't really need that. Now I do. I would love to get a wide receiver with 95 speed or something because then we can run that. We can run that triple wide receiver option, which we're not really running this year because Haston was perfect for that. He was quick. He wasn't the fastest guy in the world, but he was quick. And he had the impact thought. So that's why I ran that so much last year, and I haven't really run it much this year. Because it's going to be 82 choice. is 6'5". He's like a possession wide receiver. Marcelo at the middle. We get that all day. Especially when he's in the zone. So, yeah, right now, when, when Fox isn't suspended or hurt, I, can't, I think he's suspended. Um, the choice would basically be that it's either him or choice, and I don't really want to run that play without the dot or super speedy wide receivers. So maybe next year if we can get like a really fast freshman, we'll run that uh, triple wide receiver option that worked so well last season. But here's Wildcat, Paul Hayes. All three of our running backs right here, and this is just a QB choice. And again, man, Paul, we, they're stuffing Paul Hayes for some reason. But he, he falls forward for one yard, so not bad considering he got hit like three yards in the backfield. Second and nine. This is the eighth play of this drive. But yeah, I hope you guys are enjoying this this dynasty again. I'll say that every game. I mean, I'm just playing for fun. This is on YouTube. Uh, next season, we'll still be on YouTube. But I'm going to go for the stream. And anyone that wants to try to catch catch a game live or just hop on whenever, you know. Twitch is pretty good. You can, if you follow, if you follow someone on Twitch and turn notifications on, just like YouTube, it'll tell you, it'll tell you when they're like, as soon as they, they go live. So it's cool. It's pretty cool. Third and one, McIntyre in the zone. This is a handoff all the way. But we're really draining the clock here. Broken tackle, falling forward. Good run. 186 for McIntyre. 186. So unfortunately, he can't. He's probably not gonna get. He's not gonna get to 200 because there's only 11 yards till the end zone, and we're not gonna. We're gonna take our starters out after this series. Or at least try to. I gotta figure out mass subs. I'm, I'm not doing well with it. Well, we still don't have, I don't even think we have enough depth yet still to do mass subs. 
And look at Roberts, all the speed, just running away. And we make that diving attempt in the end zone. That's a beautiful play right there. And it's just offside, so obviously declining that. That's going to do the game, guys. That is going to do it. 30, it'll be 30 to 3 with this extra point. Only four minutes left. I mean, basically the only chance they would have had is to do is to like force a fumble and return it for a touchdown. That was pretty much that would have been the only way they could have possibly gotten back in this game. Four minutes left. We've only given up three points. Our defense has played lights out. Let's see if we can hold it, man. Let's see if we can hold them to that without a touchdown. I don't even know if I've done that in this. I feel I probably have, but oh, and look at him destroy our kicker's ACL. Fortunately, he got up, but that looked bad. He saw the way he fell, man. That, that looked bad. <laughs> right from the kicker. That's that's for sure, man. Look at, look at their coach, man. I, I, I clicked through that animation that their freaking coach was like baffled on that call. I'm like, what the hell, man? He destroyed our kicker's leg. Like, Fortunately, our kicker's tough. He's a five-star. I don't want to... Y'all don't want a rivalry. The demons, y'all don't want this rivalry. Rivalry, I can't talk. I tried to do a high kick there, and I think I got a little too much air under it. So here we go. We're going to try our mass subs, which keeps getting screwed up. So when I notice, I don't know if I noticed this this game either, but number 10, if you see number 10 in the play call screen, that's our quarterback who's playing strong safety for some reason. So I don't remember if I noticed and fix it in this game or not, but... You know, the problem is we only have four safeties on the team, and we run 3-3-5, three, three, which, you know, we could put our corners at. The, only, the problem with it, though, the problem is, like, on your depth chart, you only get to select your – you only get three safeties to select on your depth chart. So, and the problem is, I guess, you know what, I, I think I realized what would fix it, and I don't think I even do it the rest of the season, but – what what would have fixed it is if I put my third string, my default depth chart, if I put my third string strong safety, like one of my, basically it would have to be my like fifth corner, which I don't even know who that is. So it's probably not any better, but our secondary is good, but we're really thin. We have four safeties and like, we have four safeties and four good corners. And there's, there's Mr. Evans. There's big hit man Evans. Making a name for himself. 6'5", 230. He is a legit linebacker. He's an NFL linebacker. So that was that was good stuff there. I mean, he's going to be on the field a little bit. You all will see him. He's basically he's a true freshman, but he's he's my fourth man at linebacker pretty much. With the dark visor over there on the left. And look at Roberts, our quarterback, making a tackle. <laughs> I really don't love that. I don't want our quarterback playing both ways, but... You know, we pretty much got this one over, guys. You know, if you're watching, feel free to skip to the end or skip to the next video if it's already out. But uh, we got the Demons back, man. They beat us in their home turf last year, or their home field. This is, I don't even know who that is. So it's one of our corner or recruits, or corner recruits, I think. Obviously, he wasn't on the team to begin. I just don't remember. He hasn't got, fortunately, he's kind of, unfortunately, he's kind of got buried in the depth chart a little bit. Because I think he's our fourth corner. But, first and ten. You know, we need depth, though. I mean, that's what he's there for. The defense lines up with five defensive backs. Gets it on the inside. So, again, the problem is... The biggest problem I have with this season, which is not really a problem, but when we're running... When we run mass subs, we, we need, like... We do. We really need more than three running backs. So I'm redshirting. Well, I have more than three. I have Jackson and James. But like, uh, look at James is playing tight end. I just don't have enough depth for these mass subs. Like, we've got an we got an old lineman and a running back playing tight end right now. Like, we just we gotta get more depth. That's 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 the biggest thing for next season. Hayes is gonna bounce this one outside. I'm just gonna dive. No point in getting tackled. This is exactly what you want so, I mean, that's pretty much what we want to try to do next season. Is we, want, we want to build depth because I don't want to have to do this, like, this micromanagement with mass subs. Like, here, I'm just kind of rolling with it. There's only two minutes left. But, like, let's look who we have. Like, here, okay, we got we actually got Jackson in for this play, which is good. I like this because I want to get him some carries. He's a senior. I think he's a senior as well. I mean, he's been on the team since the beginning. 
And he's really, he's not bad. Like, look at this, man. I feel like every time he gets a carry, he gets 10 yards. He's not bad. I mean, he, he was not great the first season, but he's actually gone up a little bit in training, so. He's gotten better. First and 10. Ball on the 45. They line up in the shotgun. So we're going to run it with him again here. And again, basically at this point, just running the clock out. Way to fall forward. That was, he was hitting the backfield at, and they fell forward for four yards. So I think we got, like, I think we'll do, I think we got basically two more plays here. Thomas Robinson gets the player of the game. Look at that. Eight tackles, three tackles for a loss, a sack, two forced fumbles, and one fumble recovery. That is a stat sheet on defense, man. That is quite the stat sheet. The only thing he was missing was, like, a pick or something, but pretty good stat sheet, especially since he got most of that in the first quarter. And there's James. Uh, I think, okay, so James, I think, if I'm correct, he is one of two juniors on the roster, I think. So next season, James will be 50% of our seniors. <laughs> I think him and maybe an over lineman. I'm not, I, I'm not sure. I don't remember exactly. I know he's a junior, so he'll still be on the team. We got destroyed there. Did they call timeout? I swear, man. Why? Why do y'all do that? Northwestern State Demons, man. They're freaking calling timeout with 19 seconds left. And they're just going to get the ball at, like, the 10-yard line here. But it's fine. It's a good chance to practice our coffin corner punt here with Thomas. And I kind of – it's actually fine, but I actually hit – good thing I did it there because that was not – I could have done a lot better on 13-yard line. I would like to get those near the five. I mean, that's obviously the goal. Um, so here, basically, just tackle them one play here and nobody get hurt. That's basically what we want to do in the game. Unless I'm sending a blitz, so if they throw a deep ball. And, of course, i got to make the tackle with Edwards there. And they're calling timeout. What the hell? They're on the 21-yard line. they got to go 79 yards. They're calling timeouts. This is stupid, man. Their coach. This is the point of the game. If you're the other coach, you're just, like, staring at their, their head coach. Like, really? They are still running plays here. The game is over. And uh, what do they do here? They call another timeout. Three wide receivers. I don't know if I actually don't think they do here. Yeah. Yep, that's the game. So good win. Obviously our defense played great. And again, guys, don't don't let their 0-4 record deceive you because they go they go to the Big 12 championship game. And I'm not joking. I'm I mean I may actually I may be. <laughs> if I remember correctly, they go to the Big 12 championship game, so they en they end up finishing like seven and five or something like that. Um, so again, they're a good team, uh, but you know, 30 to three win. I I feel like I can say that when when we beat a team 30 to three, they they are they are a good team though. They're not bad. I I don't remember. I honestly was talking about the sh when I, talking about me streaming at the start of this video, so I don't remember what their rating was. But we we played one of our best games of the dynasty. I mean. 415 to 179, only 99 passing yards. We had 58 carries for 380 yards. We didn't have to pass at all. We just passed a few when needed. Uh, 9 of 13 on third down. It's perfect in the red zone. No interceptions, but we forced a couple fumbles. Time possession almost doubled up. So this this was a great game for us, guys. And Paul Hayes, 2 for 2, 35 yards. It's, I love it, man. I love him at Wildcat quarterback. Um what this was one of our best all-around games i mean mcintyre 186 yards washington just short of 100 and then all these guys here we got three more our three other rushers roberts and hayes with a touchdown uh jackson and james with a couple carries and then Parrish was the one getting loose on those routes this time i think normally it's kirkpatrick but yeah thomas robinson player of the game just i mean well mcintyre i mean he gets his yards but i mean i had a pass deflection he was all over the place this game, especially that first half. Edwards only had two tackles with Edwards on this one. But that's because our, we didn't have to do a whole lot. I mean, if you guys watch me on defense, I didn't have to do that much. I got a couple pass deflections. Ismail Anderson played well. 
Um, I really didn't have to do a whole lot on defense. This was one of the most. This was probably the easiest game I've ever played on defense. I didn't have to do much. I had to make like maybe, maybe three or four user plays, like a couple bat downs, and I mean they they did get a couple plays on me, but. So what we got here? We got like oh we got roster we got a uh, progress uh, it's progress week so week four week eight and week twelve we get roster progress reports so guys come back after this week and they'll hopefully some will go up in their rating they'll gain awareness most likely or whatever statistics they're they're special specializing in so. Uh, it's fun. We'll, we'll check this out because it's kind of a good uh, – and it, I honestly – I played this game so much as a kid I didn't realize that. I just thought players randomly went up like – you know, I just thought ran, I thought players randomly went up throughout the season based on how they were doing. But it's every – it's it's week four, it's week eight, and it's week 12. So one thing you want to do is don't schedule double buys like week 13 and 14 because if you do – I mean, you can, but I mean – it, it, you're, if you go up, your, your players go up week 12 again, so it's beneficial to play another game week 13 or 14, and that way your players are pretty much maxed out with performance upgrade or import, performance improvements. So, uh, look at some of these teams, man. Like you, you all saw, Western Carolina's two and two, but um, Apple, I, Chattanooga was four and zero, oh, I think. So, in season recruiting, here's our guy. Here's our man, Albert King. He's actually got excellent discipline and average potential. That is beautiful to see because you don't usually see that in in season recruiting very often. Uh, and he, we're leading the way, man. We're doing good. We're pretty far ahead from all those other four teams there. And then Willie King, he went up quite a bit. He, we jumped Furman and went way up. So, we're looking good on those two guys. And again, potential. Here's here. This is what you typically see. Like, you see, like, poor potential, average discipline. That's pretty pretty typical. Uh, this guy's still got everybody on his list. Here, here's poor potential, but good discipline. That's not bad. Um, you like to see average potential. Okay, this guy, I mean, poor potential, but he's a tight end. That's fine. Excellent discipline is good to see. So we're looking good on our in-season recruits. Now let's take a look. Fresno State still number one. Rich, uh, Towson number two. Utah number three. Uh, we jump up. We're number eight right now, but, I mean, there's – Obviously, it's only week five. There's a lot of undefeated teams still out there. Um, even even down here below us, Akron, Akron, Troy. Uh, how is uh, Georgia Southern still up in the top 20? Uh, Weber State. Sam Houston State is still right there receiving votes. So uh, We beat them when they were ranked, but they're right there. I think they were 27. So It's, it's going to be a fun season, guys. It's going to be a fun season. Uh, we're Heisman watch. This guy from uh, Tal uh, Towson is—he's just really good. He was the original player on the team, so he wasn't even a recruit. Tony Carter. I, I don't have real roster names, and in case you guys miss like the first first season, I don't, these aren't real roster names. So Thomas Robinson, player of the week, SEC. That's a pretty pretty solid stat line. Alex Rio, Appalachian State. So here we're gonna go. We're gonna check the rosters, and again, this is recorded voiceover. So uh, Townsend plus some awareness. Um, nobody gained throw power or accuracy, so all he did was go up in awareness, and he went up. Uh, Roberts gained some carry, which is not bad. That's actually pretty good since he's gonna run the ball a lot. McIntyre up one. Awareness eight. That's so. I mean, he's a senior. He's got a high awareness. Break tackle went up to Not nothing really. Nothing anywhere else though. So not much going on. Choice went up too. That's good to see. Uh, some of our guys down there gain awareness. Parrish gained plus four. Kurt Patrick with some strength of gain. Pierre Scott, our tight. He's actually turning into a good tight end. He's 78 overall. Offensive line had great improvements here. You can see our, our actual our third string tackle actually isn't that bad. He's a 78. 78 now. He was a 76. So O line, we're looking good, man. Look at the awareness on these guys as freshmen. That's pretty good. Uh, it's actually really good. And our guards here, again, 70 awareness as a freshman. That's excellent. Uh, he'll probably be at 90 awareness by the time he graduates. And then our senior, our center. So we're, we're looking good on O-line. I mean, obviously it can be better, but, you know, we're in season three. We got some five-star and four-star recruits. Those, those are, are four-star recruits. None of those O-linemen. I think one of them was five-star. Ishmael Anderson going up. So I think what I want to do season four is I want to switch him to right end and put Dennis Johnson at left end. 
Defensive tackle plus two. Thomas Robinson plus two after that game. That's that's excellent to see. Troy Powell up plus two. Uh, Bernard Evans has cracked 80, so he's gone up two already. Look at the strength, 78 strength. Awareness isn't bad for a true freshman. Tackling at 90 now. He he looks he looks like a tremendous prospect. So obviously we got he'll he'll basically just replace Thomas Robinson. That's pretty much my my goal. Uh, Whitehead went up now at our top corner. And Casey Jackson plus two. It's good to see. Our safety's up. That's good because they didn't improve. I, th I don't think they improved at all last season. Uh, Nicholas plus two, so he's gaining some ground on Edwards there. But we'd run, we run the 3-3-5 with two strong safeties anyway. So we're looking good, man. That's good improvements all around. And, guys, we are going to wrap up the video here in about two and a half minutes. Um, we do have – let's look at program. Nobody, So we got everybody back now. Nobody's suspended anymore. And we got uh, we got a team we haven't played before. So I mean, for one, this is a new team, Mississippi Valley State, and they've got a really good quarterback, 80 overall, 6'5". Uh, he can move a little bit. Not not he's not gonna run on us. But look at that arm, 95. This guy can throw the ball wherever he wants. Um, so this looks like a problem. And this guy, I remember recruiting this guy, Damon Jackson. I remember recruiting him, 87 speed, 82 overall. So he's he's pretty he's real thin though, man. He's he's 167 was out that was they have a good fullback so for some reason wide receivers not great but when they have a 80 overall quarterback he can do he can get these guys open or if these guys get open he can hit them so uh 92 speed nobody we get our nobody's faster than our two corners so we should be okay to play man coverage if we need to um tight end tight end is good three good tight ends o-line 80 78 so, I mean, you see how these teams are, they're just so much better. I mean, obviously, center, 68 overall. So, defense, 74, 65, not bad. 72, defensive tackle, 82, overall linebacker, true sophomore, and another one. So, look how this team's pretty good. Corner is our problem. So, which, which was just unfortunate for me because that's the one spot that I'm not going to expose that often. Uh, if we threw the ball around a lot, obviously they do have a good free safety, so we gotta be careful. And they have one good strong safety, so if they run that three three five, which a lot of these FCS and they have no kicker or punter, goodness. What are these guys? Just like students, primary students that just got on the team, <laughs> forty overalls. So yeah, Mississippi Valley State. It's at Mississippi Valley State, and they're they're a D plus. So I mean, I think. They're pretty top heavy with their talent, though. They do have quite a few. Like Southern, Texas Southern was a D, so obviously they're better than them. Georgia Southern, look at Georgia Southern, C plus. So they're a D plus. They have pretty top heavy talent. Like quarterback is really good, running back is really good, offensive line is pretty good. They have some good guys on defense, but you know corners are not good. Kicker and punter are horrible, so that drains that drains their ratings there a little bit. But yeah, guys, next video, check it out. It's a good one. We'll see you then.